Political tensions are rising in Nigeria as the country prepares for another round of elections, and the country is bracing itself for a hotly contested race. On February 25th, Nigerians will vote for Muhammadu Buhari's successor. The two major parties are represented by political veterans Bola Tinubu and Adeku Abubakar, but relative outsider to presidential politics, Peter Obi is gaining traction, making it a three-man race. In this video, we will examine the hypothetical matchup between three prominent candidates, Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the All Progressive Congress or the APC Party, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, and Atheku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party, or the PDP, and what it means for Nigeria. Bola Ahmed Tinubu is a former Lago state governor and one of Nigeria's most powerful politicians. He is a founding member of the APC Party, which was founded in 2013 and has since become a major force in Nigerian politics. Tinubu's popularity in the country stems from his success as a former governor and his influence in Nigeria's southwest region. Peter Obi, on the other hand, is a former Anambra state governor and a leading member of the Labour Party. He is widely regarded as one of Nigeria's most competent and efficient governors, and his track record of success in Anambra state has earned him a strong following in Nigeria's southeast region. Adeku Abubakar is a former vice president of Nigeria and a member of the PDP. He has been active in Nigerian politics for decades, and he has run for president several times, most recently in the 2019 elections. Abubakar's popularity in Nigeria stems from his government experience and promises to address Nigeria's economic and security challenges. These three candidates, however, have not been without their fair share of criticism. Mr. Tinubu, who served as governor of Nigeria's richest state, Lagos, for two terms, is likely the most talked about candidate on the ballot. There have been numerous debates about his age, name, health status, work profile, and the authenticity of his university diploma, but the source of his wealth has received the most scrutiny. Although there are no official records, many believe Mr. Tinubu, 70, is one of Nigeria's wealthiest politicians. According to publicly available documents, the U.S. Department of Justice claimed that beginning in early 1988, accounts opened in the name of Bola Tinubu held the proceeds of sales of white heroin, a prohibited substance. The special agent in charge of the investigation claimed that Mr. Tinubu worked for their main suspect, Adegoboyega Akand. According to the agent, Mr. Tinubu initially admitted to him over the phone that he knew Mr. Akandi, but later recanted and stated that he had no financial dealings with him. While the court agreed that there was reason to believe the money in the bank accounts was the proceeds of drug trafficking, Mr. Tinubu and the others denied the allegations, and the court never issued a final ruling on the money's origins. Instead, Mr. Tinubu, who was not charged personally with the money, reached a compromise with the authorities and forfeited $460,000. Mr. Tinubu has always denied any involvement in the drug trade, and his spokesman, Festus Kiyamo, stated that the funds forfeited were part of a civil forfeiture rather than a criminal one. He also reached an out-of-court settlement with accountant Oladapo Apara, who had a falling out with Ms. Tinubu last year Mr. Apara was a founder of Alpha Beta Consulting, which was founded during Ms. Tinubu's tenure as governor and was awarded a lucrative contract to track taxes in Live Estate, which it still holds. According to the accountant, Mr. Tinubu had a 70% controlling interest in the company through proxies, and the firm received a 10% commission on revenues collected, which he estimated to be $3.48 billion between 2002 and 2018. Mr. Tinubu denies this, claiming that he is not paid commissions on taxes collected by the Lago state government. Mr. Apara claims he was fired from the firm in 2010 after alleging that some funds had been misappropriated, prompting him to launch a lengthy legal battle to seek redress. 
He claimed he could not be fired as the firm's founder and demanded compensation from Mr. Tinubu, resulting in a court case in 2021. Mr. Tinubu has consistently denied any affiliation with the firm, but he was a party to an undisclosed settlement between Alpha Beta and Mr. Apara last June, which resulted in the party's claims against each other being settled. Mr. Tinubu was questioned by the BBC about the settlement, the U.S. allegations, and his wealth, but he did not respond to a request for comment. The 76-year-old said his first source of income was farming and property ownership in his home state of Adamawa. A former customs officer, he said that he recognized early in life that he had a good nose for money. He established an oil servicing firm in the 1980s catapulting him into the world of the wealthy. Opponents claim he is breaking the law by engaging in private business other than farming. Mr. Abubakar's spokesperson described his venture as a small business that many government employees engage in, such as using their car as a taxi or setting up a shop in front of their house to support their families. He only invested his earnings in order to earn interest. He was not engaged in any other form of private work, as you and plea, according to Paul Ide of the BBC, a U.S. Senate committee report from 2010 claimed that between 2000 and 2008, Mr. Abubakar transferred more than $40 million in suspect funds into the U.S. through one of his four wives. According to the report, at least $1.7 million of this came from bribes paid by Siemens a German technology company that pleaded guilty to bribery charges in 2008 and agreed to pay a $1.6 billion fine. He was also a key figure in the corruption trial of former U.S. Congressman William Jefferson, who was described as really corrupt in a Senate report and said he needed money to bribe him to approve a U.S. company's business deals in Nigeria. Mid Jefferson was convicted in 2009 and sentenced to 13 years in prison, a sentence that was later reduced. Mr. Abu Bakar has repeatedly denied wrongdoing, and neither he nor his now-divorced wife is facing criminal charges in the United States. Adeku Abu Bakar is not on trial for corruption or any other wrongdoing in Nigeria or anywhere else. And then there's of course Peter Obi, who has also served two terms as governor, in his case, in Anambra State's eastern region does not hide his enormous wealth, which he claims was amassed through banking and the importation of various goods into Nigeria. Many were surprised when his name appeared in the Pandora Papers in 2021, dubbed Mr. Clean, by his supporters for being a rare Nigerian politician without accusations of embezzling public funds. This was a leak of nearly 12 million documents that revealed the world's rich and powerful's hidden wealth, tax evasion, and in some cases, allegations of money laundering. One of the newspapers involved in the Pandora Papers investigation, Nigeria's Premium Times, claimed that the documents revealed that in 2010, when Mr. Obi was governor of Anambra, he established a company named after his daughter in the British Virgin Islands to help him avoid tax. While using a tax haven is not illegal, opening foreign bank accounts while serving as a public officer is not. The Premium Times claimed that this demonstrated Mr. Obi's failure to declare his assets, as well as his failure to resign from the UK registered company Next International, of which he was a director when he became governor, engaging in private business, which is prohibited for public officers. His resignation became effective 14 months into his term, as the election draws nearer to its penultimate end, one can only say it's truly an election of choosing the better of three evils as Nigeria has had to grow accustomed to since its independence. As the three candidates prepare for the highly anticipated election, their policies and strategies are being scrutinized. Tinubu is running on an economic reform and job creation platform promising to address Nigeria's unemployment crisis and revitalize the country's struggling economy. He is also an outspoken supporter of decentralization and state rights, which has earned him the support of many Nigerians who feel marginalized by the central government. Peter Obi is focusing on social justice and equality, 
promising to address Nigeria's growing inequality gap and fight corruption. He has emphasized the importance of improved education and healthcare systems, and if elected, he has promised to increase funding for these sectors. Adeku Abubakar is campaigning on a platform of economic development and growth, promising to create jobs, modernize infrastructure, and attract foreign investment to Nigeria. He has also promised to improve security and address the insurgency in Nigeria's Northeast. The blockbuster meeting of these three candidates has sparked heated debate in Nigeria, with many Nigerians split on who would make a better president. Some regard Tinubu as a strong and decisive leader with the experience and political acumen to guide Nigeria in the right direction. Others regard him as a symbol of the corruption and political elite that have long held Nigeria back. Regardless of who wins the high decisive matchup, the Nigerian people are clearly hungry for change and eager to see their country progress. The Nigerian elections are a watershed moment for the country, with far-reaching consequences for the entire continent. While the rest of the world watches and waits, the Nigerian people must decide who will lead them into a brighter future. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching till the end, and please remember to leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't. We'd also love to get your opinion in the comments below, so be sure to drop a comment. And as always, see you in the next video.